Let's face it, some of the most highly visible things in any community are advertisements. They begin as visual clutter promising us better life or fast relief while exhorting us to buy one product or another. But some advertisements, if they're around long enough, have a way of getting under our skin and becoming a recognizably cool part of the cultural landscape. Here's KCTS producer Felix Benell with a personal look around at Seattle Neon. Seattle is a great city for just driving around and looking at old stuff from the city's past. Especially late at night when there's not much traffic on the streets and practically nobody out walking around on the sidewalks. My older brothers got me hooked on this windshield museum and I take every chance I can to visit my favorite things all over the city. And a lot of those favorite things happen to be neon signs. We begin in Ballard, where the giant Bardall sign is magnificent in scale, if not necessarily always in working order. The cool thing about this sign from the early 1950s is that it speaks its own language. You don't even have to listen carefully to hear the solenoids or relays or whatever Yestertech is making the words on the sign flash and change. There's a steady, reassuring, decidedly analog ka-chunk accompanying every change. An often overlooked sign just a few blocks west of Bardal is nowhere near the same scale. But it's worth getting out of the car to appreciate up close. Max Upholstery. The 1950s style bench seat is brilliantly rendered in neon tubing. And this sign has a crazy story. It was taken down from the building in the 1970s as part of a remodel, and then it disappeared. A few years later, it turned up in an antique store. A new owner of Max stumbled across it, bought it, and restored it and had it reinstalled on the building. This time of night, it's a quick drive from Ballard to downtown. The Elephant Car Wash on Denny Way at Aurora Avenue feels like a refugee from Las Vegas, but it's been gracing this local business since the 1950s. The nice thing about this sign is that you can appreciate it up close and from far away. You can walk right up to it and touch the pole it rotates on. And you can walk a block or two away and view it from multiple angles, even taking in the junior elephant sign on the southwest corner of the property. A few blocks west of the elephant is the granddaddy of Seattle Neon, and it will rock your world. The old Seattle Post Intelligencer Globe it has definitely seen better days, and it used to rotate. Hearst had it built back in 1948 for the old PI headquarters at 6th and Denny, and then moved the whole operation down the street back in 1986. It's kind of hard to imagine now, but the PI Globe and the Pink Elephant were neighbors. They were right across the street from each other for 30 years. What I love about each of these neon signs is how much they transmit beyond their marketing message. They may be plugging car washes or oil additives or upholstery or what's now just a website, but what they really say to me is, you're in Seattle right now. You're not in Baltimore or Miami or even Portland. They're landmarks. And let's hope these signs and the unique Seattle identity they represent never burn out. Do you have a favorite neon sign? Or is there a long gone neon sign you're still stuck on? Tell us about it or post a picture if you can on Pi's Facebook page. <laughs>